We move to other stories and more than 700 residents of Agaveji and other co coastal communities in the Ketu South municipality have been displaced following tidal waves there which blew their homes away. We'll show you what happened in Ketu South just days ago but first this is what our My Community cameras captured at Salakofe and Amushino in 2018. It's a room, man. Eh? Yes, it's a room. Yes. It's the beginning of the house. Yes. Come. Yeah. This is the beginning of the house. The house starts from here. To that place. And then the second one is over there. In the sea. And the room too. There are about three bedrooms here. It was destroyed by the sea. Of, uh, our, the foundation of uh, our senior brother, Ernest Bojoka Tete. That is uh, his foundation. African pastor of uh, African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. House and the room to uh, this, uh, this in the city. Now, the resident says the government has not shown commitment over the years to fix the situation permanently for them. They accuse the assembly of giving out land that could be used to resettle residents to some foreigners to mine salt. Our correspondent Ivy Setoji has been speaking with some of them. Ke agbe de nyi me kana la mi ashia do komi le ko ba ashia da ba ho garata o fi a don ba tonji sewo a be nyen ne lia a ba tonji sewo ba to ra ka mo no jia mo a fo lia ma no yin 
The sea has really destroyed our lands and still destroying, but nothing seems to be done about it. The only land we have by the side of the lagoon which can be used to resettle us has been given to some foreigners for the salt project. We have appealed to the government several times, but no response. Who are our leaders? I am asking because if we really do have good leaders, all these things will be happening to us. We generate a lot of revenue for the assembly. And yet nothing is done about the tidal waves. We have nowhere to go because of the devastation. We don't know why our leaders have taken the side of the foreigners who are taking our lands despite the destruction of our homes and properties by the sea. We are pleading with government and the international community to come to our aid. Elliot Adam Agbenowu is Municipal Chief Executive of K2 South. He's on the telephone lines to explain the assembly side of this tragedy. Uh, Mr. Agbenowu, so what is the assembly doing to practically come to the aid of these people? Hello, Mr. Agbenu, can you hear me? Right, um, so the, the visuals currently on your screen are from Agaveji. Uh, it's a coastal community, and it's one of many coastal communities that have been affected by tidal waves. As you saw earlier with some of the visuals that we showed you, Entire homes have had their foundations eaten away by the high tides which come in from the sea. Of course, the bigger issue here is really about the issues, the conditions of the climate and why it's the case that the shorelines are getting thinner and the sea is eating farther into the surface of the land. But there are some reliefs that the people expect from their assembly authorities and this is one of the questions that are being raised. Unfortunately, they claim that the lands th that were initially available for them to relocate to have been given to some foreigners for them to mine salt. And as a result, they are out of options when it comes to places to move to. As you can see there, some terracing was there, some rocks were placed on the seashore to prevent the waves of the sea from coming up. And those are the rocks currently in your in your shot however it looks like these rocks uh, have done very little or they are not enough to actually um, prevent the devastation that is currently happening if you look there this building is under construction but still we find that the waves are eaten away from the very foundation of this building this is placing anyone who's going to live there in a very very precarious state my community's team has been speaking with the authorities and the people of Agaveji um, over the years. Let's bring you what they, what the discussion that they had in 2018. <laughs> Okay. 
Um, okay, so Daniel Tete also is a resident here and he's saying that, well, um, it will be good to be given the valley across the street, but just as how it's been done for the people of Keta um, with the sea defense project, they should do the same thing for, for them as well because um, the filling the valley where the, the Amelia, Amelia suggested earlier, his point is that if that is done, it, um, government is going to spend money on that project and so they might as well use that money to, to kind of get them the sea defense project quickly. Let's now go back to the phone lines and speak to Elliot Edem Agbeno, Municipal Chief Executive, uh, Municipal Chief Executive of K2 South. He's on the phone to explain the assembly side of this tragedy. Mr. Agbeno, where are you speaking to us from? Yes, I'm speaking from uh, Salakope. First of all, let me say a very good morning to our cherished viewers and listeners. I'm speaking to you right away at Salakope. I've been checking for over five kilometers now because the entire road has been blocked and even threatened to burn my car. The police have to barricade my car and uh, they demanded that I walk for that kilometer to enable me to receive their petition and also address it. So I think I've done about uh, four kilometers now. Um, so I'm at and I'm moving towards Adamu. And these persons who threaten to burn your car are residents who are yes, demanding... They are demonstrators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are the people who are demonstrating. Mm -hmm. The angry people. Uh, it got a bit chaotic because uh, they were trying to be to pull the gun from the police. And uh, 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 they threatened to even uh, uh, beat up some police officers. Just because the police think that uh, they don't want to go uh, hard on them, they were trying to calm the situation. And so, because of that, some policemen are even in the car now because they threaten that when they see them, they're going to beat them. And uh, their anger is that uh, to, for them, the youth, especially the youth, they do not understand why I'm a native. And the administrative chief executive, and yet uh, the sea defense project haven't done it. My explanation to them has been that as the chief executive for the assembly, the assembly hasn't got a resource, that amount of resource to construct a sea defense wall. But again, they have to recall that it is due to my influence and this government that I have done the extension that was started by the SOL government. In 2017, we have been able to do that. The president has ordered the finance to release money for Amandi Holdings to come and continue and finish that project somewhere in 2019. And it was in that same year, 2019, that we have begun the extension uh, project. Uh, we call it Blakusu Phase 2. That has gone far mm. up to finance level for approval. Uh, however, it has some bottlenecks at the ministry. And so uh, after election 2020 and now 2021, we have commenced a new process again. Uh, apparently, the sea continues to destroy. That is the truth. Displace people and also to uh, destroy property. That is the, the, that is the bad truth. And I know my people are suffering. Because of that, we have uh, also uh, commenced a new process. Uh, which has seen the hydrological service being sent to this place from the Ministry of Works and Housing. Uh, they came and had a meeting with the community and also assessed the situation themselves. And so they went back, and I have got a reply through my regional minister, who I've also been working at, and currently who is also in Accra, on the same project issue through from the works and housing, assuring me that uh, my my sea defense project that the is, is a priority for them, and uh, they are seeking approval from finance so they can uh, engage a contractor to come right. to sign. Yes. Right. Uh, so I, I just want to ask, uh, Mr. Agbeno, as much as we don't condone violence and we don't condone persons breaking the law, 700 people have been displaced. They are currently demonstrating. 
in spite of the efforts that have been put in by your government, your regional minister and the works and housing ministry, they don't have a place to sleep. Is their anger not justified? What, what we, we've got in a place for them. Indeed, it is not appropriate. And uh, when we happen first, as we have engaged them, they aren't willing, they are not willing to move far away from where they are. Indeed, this is where they also get their livelihood. And so we understood them that we, when we take them far away, it's going to worry them in terms of going back to do their fishing regularly as they do. And so there is a portion at the outskirts of the town where we normally call Kota, uh, Salakope and Agaveji Kota, which is at the, under contention between the two communities, Agaveji and Salakope. So what we did was music to come in, that's the Security Council, and lay hands on that portion. And now from a committee of both Agaveji and Salakope, including the assembly members, that those who are displaced to write their name and go to that post, that place, which is just about uh, a kilometer or less than a kilometer from from the coast. It's just at the outskirts of the town, yes. And so that is where they are going. And we've also instructed that we should do just uh, a temporary structure where we wait for NADMO to bring some tents for those who couldn't do the temporary structure. And also the road linking to the place. We've also appealed to uh, a salt company to do the construction for them. And the assembly have also uh, extended water to where they are currently, some people are currently uh, relocating to. And so uh, it is not true that they haven't got any place. We have allocated that place for them in the meantime, as we continue to wait on the uh, ministry for to expedite action on the sea defense project. Now, on this issue of the ministry expediting action on the sea defense project, um, we had a conversation with you in 2018, and we had similar assurances that work is ongoing, it's in the pipeline, action must be expedited. Three years down the line, we are where we are currently. What's the guarantee that this time will be any different? Yes. Um, the 2018 was supposed to be a continuation from phase one to phase two. But again, when I was uh, pushing, there was the need for the Parliamentary Select Committee, which also uh, supervised and oversee the works of the Ministry of Works and Housing to come, and also assess the first work that was done. And so they, they came, and uh, they spent, I think, three days here. They were, we toured the entire place. And they've seen the new, the new place that I'm advocating for, for the extension. And indeed, they've also agreed with me that there was a need for that extension. And so they went and also gave their report to the ministry. Uh, I was only wishing, I was only uh, 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 waiting patiently for the ministry to comment the process, uh, only to see again ravaging and also taking more houses back into the sea and also displacing the people. So I believe that the way we have gotten to now uh, calls for an urgent attention and the ministry is in that light that the ministry has sent uh, emissaries to come and look at the place and also do their recommendations. And I believe that the member of parliament is also talking to his colleague ministers and uh, I will only hope that with all the efforts that we are putting in now, uh, it will definitely receive the necessary attention. Government is not totally oblivious of this. As I said, the process has commenced earlier, uh, had some bottleneck, and this time around we can assure our people that uh, we will try and do our very best to so that extension will be done to protect. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Agbeno, but it sounds very similar to what you told us in 2018. We will do it. We'll make sure it's done. It's very important to us. The Parliamentary Select Committee came, and then the work was not done. This time, it's the Ministry of Works and Housing that has sent the Hydrological Service to come and look at this. There's, what's the real guarantee that three years down the line, we will not have a similar conversation? Are you able to give any timelines? to your assurances, Ms. Agbeno? I can only assure, but uh, to give a timeline, I wouldn't be able. 
But I can assure that uh, because of the calls I've started receiving from my big men, ministers in Accra, and uh, some head of agencies, uh, I can only assure my people with a certainty that uh, in, in, in the shortest time possible, the contractor will be returning to site for the two. Because uh, I'm saying this because uh, my regional minister have assured me that there were other people who also came to, to him with assurance that they can uh, finance even the project. So what they are waiting for now is for a letter of intent or approval that the Ministry of Works and Housing is taking. I wouldn't take too long for the team that is ready now with the finance to actually do the project and uh, uh, go into that agreement with government so government can pay them later. So I believe that with a new path that we are charting, uh, it wouldn't be too long. It wouldn't be too long. Uh, we'll have a very positive uh, response. Is it in the ministry's budget, by way of, you know, by way of assurance? Is this in the ministry's budget? Ministry of Works and Housing, yes, it is in their budget. For which year? Yes. For which year? For which year, Mr. Agbenu? Is it 2018, 2019, or 2020? Oh, currently. Currently, it is in the budget. How and much? You know, you know, oh, you mean the amount. I wouldn't be able to mention the exact amount. And What's the sure source of funding? Not in the budget, uh, 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 the Minister for Works and Housing, the Honourable Minister, wouldn't have written to finance taking an approval for this year. You know, once the thing is not in the project, uh, in, in the budget, unless you do a review, which is just uh, this June, that we are doing a review. So whether it's in the budget or not, which I'm sure that it's in the budget for, for this year, because my information is that they have sent a lot of projects to finance, seeking approval for many of them. However, finance has killed them to a number. And that number, my area, is part of that number. That is why I can be sure and, and talk to you that it will be done. Um, uh, Mr. Agbeno, you are well aware, um, as I'm sure that you are briefed by the experts, that because of the construction of phase one of the sea defense, which was done, um, close to four years ago, um, more of the water has been directed to the area earmarked for phase two, which is why we are seeing disasters of this level in, the, in Agaveji and the surrounding communities. If this is not done expeditiously, these people are going to face bigger challenges than what they're currently facing. You're aware of this? <laughs> Do you agree? Can you come again with a question? But, uh, I, can you come again with a yes, question? my question is, are you aware yes. that because yes. of the completion of phase one of yes. this project, yes. the water that should have gone over the shore at phase one is now being directed here. And so yes. these people's lives are in more danger. Yes. Thank you yes, very I'm much, very, Ms. Abuenu. Myself, I'm a fisherman. And you cannot, you cannot actually block uh, a pathway for water. Once you block a pathway for water, water finds its own way. And so definitely what the assertion we are putting across is the truth that I've always uh, been, been saying, that it's because of where the sea defense project is won, is ended. It has therefore pushed the water, the sea water, into the adjoining communities and the houses. And that is normal with water, behavior of water. Everywhere, even when people block that test, that is where water will have to find its way to destroy houses and other things. And so, what we are saying and proposing mm. is that how we did first was 4.2 kilometers up to part of Agaveji. What is left now from Agaveji to Aplau border? Aplau border is about 10 kilometers or 10.2 kilometers. And so, that is what we are advocating for. However, we can do phase two, phase three, just as it was done at Atoko in the Keta Anglo Enclave. That was right. phase one project, phase two, and the phase three. So whichever way, even if it is just five kilometers, we got now, or six, that can cover up to part of Adina, where we can have some briefing space, then we can continue with a phase three or phase. You know, the, the cost of doing these things are just expensive. Otherwise, even the assembly would have done this. This is where I come from. And I know what is happening. Right.
the assembly do not have the resources. Other way we would have done that. So all that we are telling our people is that this is the natural phenomenon. This is the natural disaster. The government is not doing anything. They have a cost to complain. But Thank you. They know that solves the problem for them. So they Thank you. Just give us Time and we'll fix it for them. Thank you, Elliot. Adam he is the municipal chief executive for K2 South. This is News Desk. Stay with us.